Peace be to you on this beautiful uh, Sabbath day. I am Ben Thompson with the Free Citizens of America, and today we're going to begin our weekly study of the Torah. The Torah is such an important part of American culture that for years our enemies have worked hard to get us to ignore the Torah and to abandon it. So we need to fight against them by returning to the Torah, by studying it. All the principles that the Constitution is based off of can be found in the Torah as well as other ancient uh, sources. For the Torah is supreme, it is the supreme law for man and society, while as the Constitution is the law pertaining to government. And that the law for man, society, and government work together to establish a free society. So, we are going to be reading from this Bible. I actually thought this was cool. My mom found this for me at a, at a used bookstore. It's a Masonic Edition Bible. You know that the Freemasons helped to uh, found the United States. And that if it, if it wasn't for their efforts, then we probably wouldn't have been able to, to do what we did. Now, so you'll, you'll need a Bible, a King James Version. This is a King James Version of the Bible, the translation. And I would suggest you get something to mark. And you can read along. And we're going to stop and talk about some things, but the, the color blue is important. It symbolizes wisdom, a wisdom from heaven above. And that's where the Torah comes from, from heaven above. It was given by God to man through revelation to, uh, in Moses in order to make a, help us to create our own society. And we are going to read every uh, holy day, every week. And together we will remember the principles that the Torah teaches us. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to be starting in Genesis chapter 1, because that is the beginning. And though, though the primary law is found in later parts of the Torah, Genesis gives us a basic understanding of the time frame and it gives us some very important concepts too. So that's why we're going to start there and not directly into the, the law itself. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And call, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. This concept is important for us because it shows us that there is a God, and that he is the creator of all these things. And the first thing he did was to establish the light from the darkness. Now, this isn't talking about uh, physical light or darkness as we see it today. This is talking about the pr principles of light and darkness. The light is the good, and the darkness is the bad. And God made distinction. It says here, it says um, God divided the light. But in Hebrew, which I also have studied and, and know, has a... Uh, shown us, the Hebrew says that it is actually sh could be translated distinction. So God made a distinction between the light and the darkness. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. 
And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament with the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day and God said let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth and the open firmament of heaven and God created great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind and God saw that it was good and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth a living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and the beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So this first principle that we're learning today is the creation, that God, there is a God, that he created all things, and that he created man and woman in his image. and he made them to rule over the earth. Now think about what's going on in our day. They're telling us that we do not own the earth and that we actually should reverence the earth. But it's the opposite of the way around. God created us to have dominion and to subdue the earth. Now of course this isn't talking about being wasteful or neglectful but we are to use the earth as we see fit and as God has taught us to do so. And continuing on in Genesis chapter 2 it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. 
So let's pause right there and let's mark those two verses because that's very important. The seventh day. Now, let's not get into the whole Sunday, Saturday uh, argument because it's, I don't feel that's that important because it's one day out of seven. But what is important is that it, we, the Lord wants us to have one day to rest from our worldly labor and to remember God. And America is not doing that today. We, we, work, we, ha we have the capacity to work seven days a week. Under the, the Torah, we are supposed to work for only six days, and the seventh day is for God. Ma imagine how much better our society would be if we followed this principle of allowing people to spend time with their families at home one day out of the week, where we don't have to, where everything can shut down as much as possible and nobody has to do any labor. Our families will be strengthened and the Lord would bless us with greater wealth. When in the past this used to be honored mostly but now we have turned away from it and because of it we are becoming poor and making less money and the Lord cannot bless us unless we do what he says. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And so everything is created in this garden, and two ways are set before uh, our ancestors, Adam and Eve. The way of the tree of life, and the way of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and came into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is it which in, which compasseth the whole land of Havalia, where there is gold, and the gold of the land is good. There is Bedillum and the onyx stone, and the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekel, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria, and the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. So let's pause right there. We have two principles again. Adam is told to not eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he also has to have a help me. Now, whether you want to believe the, the whole tree of life and tree of knowledge thing. Personally, I am of the belief that 
God wanted Adam and Eve to take the tr fruit of the tree of, of knowledge of good and evil so that he could become a free thinker. And because Adam, having no knowledge in the Garden of Eden, could not could neither sin nor do good because he couldn't he couldn't understand anything. But by taking the 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 tree the fruit of the tree of the of knowledge of good and evil, his mind was opened to the things and he was able to make distinction like God between good and evil. God wanted Adam and Eve to take that fruit so that they could enter into that state where they could become like God and make distinction between good and evil. Which is, which is why I'm under the belief that God provided a savior through Jesus Christ to rectify the fall and bring us who now have the ability to know and make distinctions between good and evil back into the presence of God the Father. Now Adam was alone and God said that this state is not good. And so God made him a helpmate, we call Eve, which means the mother of the living. And that is a very important concept, so I'm going to mark it with my blue marker. So right away we are supposed to understand that man and woman is not meant to be separated and not meant to be alone. And so, this is conflicting with our modern thought that men and women are supposed to be alone and develop themselves first, and then if they want to, to, to get married, and even then, they are still separate, because they are not truly together, even though they're married, because they're living two separate lives, and they're just married for convenience. That is not what the Torah implies, it implies that we are supposed to work as one unit and it is, it is not good for us to be alone and out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them and whatsoever Adam called every living creature that was the name thereof and Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field but for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So I'm going to mark up verse 24 as a reminder that we are to leave our parents and to become one flesh with our spouse. And modern society is not allowing us to do that because it teaches us to be alone and self-sufficient for ourselves when in reality we are supposed to depend on our spouse both ways. Now let's read chapter 3 and this will be the last chapter for today because it completes the Garden of Eden story. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. 
And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the tree of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all of cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, in which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and in dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin, and clothed them. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden in Terebims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. That ends chapter 3. Now we have three very important concepts in here. Now, if you notice, it never actually specifically curses Adam and Eve. It curses, God curses the serpent and God curses the ground. And God sets the established order, saying that man shall be head of the woman. Now, as I said before, I believe that, the, that God actually wanted Adam and Eve to take the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But he had to tell them not to do it in order for them to break his commandment because that was the only way they could sin because they knew nothing else they could not violate anything and God being perfect could not create sin because sin is the absence of, of following God and to go against his word so God creating a perfect state yet that in that state Adam and Eve could neither grow and could not have children and could not really have joy because they did not know good and evil, they did not know sorrow and joy. They had to contradict the command of God to bring about a fallen state. And that is the state we're living in now. And because all of us have the capacity now to learn to make distinction between good and evil, 
we have become like our Father in being able to know good from evil. And that concept is being greatly corrupted today because through the television we are being taught that good is evil and evil is good. They, in our schools they are teaching that evil is good and good is evil. And this whole, our whole societal structure has been turned around so that we have lost the ability to make distinction between good and evil and therefore we are in a very we are in worse fallen state than our ancestors now all of God granted us freedom through the tree of knowledge of good and evil in fact in a way you can say that God saved us intelligently through that act because by intelligence we become capable of knowing good and evil and as it says here it says literally it says God, God says behold the man has become as one of us to know good and evil and that's and God wants us to know good and evil that's why he gave us the Torah so that we can learn based off of this what is good and what is evil what God says to do, that is good. What God says not to do, that is evil. Now, the second concept is that is that a woman is to be ruled over by man. Now, of course, this doesn't talk about being bad or violent or cruel. Men who are like that towards their their wives will stand accountable before God. But we do have to understand that God created man to be a head and woman to be a heart and together they form one body. With a man having certain skills that are ad adapt for his responsibility and women have certain skills and natural ability that, that f for her to fulfill her responsibility. Now modern society has turned that around even to the point where it's making women as heads and men to be submissive to women. And because of that, the, our families have been destroyed and overturned. And when that happens, then our society crumbles and falls apart and cannot stand. The final principle taught here is that, is that Adam is to till the ground and to labor by the sweat of his brow for his bread. And here, this is where God is commanding us to be an agrarian society. The agrarian culture is the highest form of society because no man can be truly free unless he can till his own land. We have become a society of slaves because we have abandoned our farming heritage that God has given to us. And that is, I'm going to mark those three passages about um, God, about man knowing good and evil like God. I'm going to mark the one about Adam with this eating by, work, work eating by the sweat of his brow. Notice that it says that God cursed the ground for thy sake, meaning to make man better. And I'm also going to mark the passage about a man being the head of the woman. And all of these things are being abandoned today, and we need to return to the Torah if we are going to save this nation. And I leave that with you in the name of the Almighty. Amen.